Um, so welcome again. Um, my name is uh, Daniel Valdez. I am the Chief External Affairs Officer at Welcoming America. And we are really excited today to be talking about Welcoming Week this year, sharing some best practices and resources to help plan your events. Um, we'll go ahead and go on to the uh, to the next slide and just um, so you share a little bit about the speakers. Um, you'll be hearing today from myself, um, as well as from our communications director, Lola Pack, and our digital engagement manager, Sofia Hernandez. Um, after that, we will be hearing from some uh, of our amazing uh, partners who have hosted Welcoming Week events to share a little bit about their uh, work with Welcoming Week. Uh, we'll be hearing from Celeste with the West Central Initiative Foundation, uh, Siham with uh, North Dakota State University, and uh, Jovi uh, with the Hamilton City Council in New Zealand. So again, welcome to everyone um, and uh, continue to put your information there on the chat. We're also encouraging folks to use the Q&A function on the webinar so that you can um, have your questions there. We will have some time at the end for some Q&A. And so make sure that um, as questions come up, you use that Q&A function. And we'll, uh, we'll keep reminding folks of that um, so that we make sure we have um, all the questions uh, answered that, that you all have. Um, let's go ahead um, and get started. So uh, for all of you who are new to Welcoming America or to Welcoming Week, um, I will share just a little bit about what Welcoming Week is. Uh, but before that, I just want to say a little bit about Welcoming America. We are a U.S.-based organization. Uh, we work across the United States with local communities and helping them uh, with their welcoming efforts. Uh, we provide technical support, coaching, uh, and resources to municipal governments and nonprofit organizations working to make their local communities more welcoming for newcomers, including immigrants and refugees. Um, welcoming Week is a campaign, our annual campaign, um, which celebrates uh, the work uh, in communities that are becoming more welcoming places for everyone, including immigrants uh, and refugees. Uh, welcoming Week was launched back in 2012, and Welcoming Week provides uh, individuals and organizations the opportunities to really showcase their values through events and initiatives that foster connections and collaborations between immigrants and non-immigrants as well as belonging for, for everyone. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of the ways in which Welcoming Week uh, works. And if you wanna go on to the, to the next slide, please. Um, so uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the way in which Welcoming Week um, is, is, is leveraged by local communities, by organizations, uh, is really to think about the ways in which this campaign can really help um, a broader movement around global narratives and uh, in, a, in a movement around uh, creating more welcoming and inclusive communities. It's also an opportunity to highlight some, um, to, to do some local spotlights uh, and to build and expand our partnerships as well as bridge building work. So we can go on to the, uh, to the next slide, please. So um, as I mentioned, uh, Welcoming Week was a campaign that started in the United States in 2012. Um, but has expanded into a global uh, campaign. And we are very excited to be working with uh, amazing organizations and partners uh, in Australia, in New Zealand, in the UK, in Canada, in uh, so many other places around the world. And we are very excited that Welcoming We has now have this global narrative and is part of a global movement as well. So uh, we're, we're really excited to continue this work and to have more and more people join us here in the United States, but also across the world. And we will be hearing from some of those partners and how they've been engaging with Welcoming Week. As I mentioned as well, uh, into the local spotlight, uh, we can go on to the, to the next slide. Um, one of the great things about Welcoming Week is that it provides people the really a range of opportunities to really highlight local contributions, local organizations, and local leaders, uh, and really, uh, be able to, to shine that spotlight on the work that is happening on the ground and really um, help uh, create a culture of welcoming and belonging at the local level. And, um, and we see this through the hundreds and hundreds of events that are hosted throughout Welcoming Week. Uh, and those, those local events really 
um, contribute to this larger uh, narrative and movement around welcoming. Um, welcoming Week is also an opportunity to build uh, and expand local partnerships. Um, we, of course, work with uh, lots of different organizations. Uh, last year, we had over 30 partners um, that range from uh, organizations like the Trust for Public Lands to the YMCA, through uh, libraries, uh, community foundation associations. So uh, very much like, like the work that we do at Welcoming America, a lot of our partners and local hosts utilize Welcoming Week to expand their partnerships and to build uh, uh, on those partnerships. And they are, it's a great way to engage uh, your local arts organizations, to engage your nonprofit organizations, your municipal governments, uh, your public spaces, your um, chambers of commerce and economic development agencies. So Welcoming Week is really an opportunity and a tool that can be used uh, to really bring in all of those uh, new partners. And then finally, um, one of the uh, biggest uh, things about Welcoming Week is the opportunity to bridge uh, to bridge build, to bring communities together across differences, uh, to really think about how can you create programs and opportunities for people to connect in a meaningful uh, way and to, and to share, uh, share, up, share time and space together to start building those bridges. And so Welcoming Week uh, provides a range of support for communities who are interested um, in this work. And so that's a quick overview about Welcoming Week. Um, there's a lot of tools and resources that we've curated for those who are looking to um, host events and, um, and we've created lots of assets and particularly around communication. So uh, I wanna hand it over to my colleague, uh, Lola Pack, who is our communications director, who will share more about the ways in which uh, communications resources can be leveraged and used by all of you who are looking to host Welcoming Week events this year. Lola, handing it over to you. Thanks, Daniel. And hi, everyone. Uh, so happy that there's so much interest around Welcoming Week. Uh, it's just been really exciting over the last few years that I've been at Welcoming America to really see it grow from primarily US-based movement to really becoming more international. So thank you all for, especially to those who are uh, dialing in from, from other countries. Um, I don't know what time it is over there, but I hope it's a decent hour for, for you all. Um, uh, can we get started on the next slide? Uh, so um, part of uh, what we try to do on the communications team at Welcoming America is um, provide a, um, a set of easy activations for people to engage in the campaign uh, that aren't just, I guess, traditionally communications focused, which I guess most people would assume are kind of around the media and with social media. Uh, but there are actually a number of different ways uh, to get involved, and I think that will also inform your communications uh, strategy. Um, before I kind of dive into these four areas, uh, the, uh, we, we want people to think of Welcoming Week as kind of an opportunity to not only talk about your community's welcoming values and not to really just focus on the event themselves, but really have it be also a chance to promote your organization's ongoing work uh, with the community, especially uh, with other entities around the community that you may or may not have existing relationships with. Um, so we'd really want you all to think of Welcoming Week as an amplifier um, for your year-round work uh, and mission in general. Uh, and so I guess with that in mind, I wanted to kind of name off sort of these four different activations that you all can use and then have your communications uh, be informed by how you decide to approach and engage with, with Welcoming Week. So I guess the first thing and the most obvious one is to host. And by this, we mean hosting an event. Um, it really, this is kind of a core activity of, of Welcoming Week. Um, but last year, we had over 450 events take place both in in person and virtually and in countries all across the world. Um, and so uh, events and where places where people can gather and like different groups of people can also meet uh, is really at the heart of what Welcoming Week is all about. And so uh, anyone can host. Uh, this isn't limited to those who have previously engaged with Welcoming America by any means. Uh, the toolkit is available on our website and my colleague Sophia will go into more about that, uh, but that's available for anyone to, to leverage uh, and um, use to host their event. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, events can be both virtual or in person. Um, and uh, with that, our guest speakers uh, later in the presentation will also share more about what that event looks like for those who, who may not be familiar with it. Uh, the second type of uh, activation, if you're unable to host or if you want to complement your uh, event, 
um, is uh, to just share. Uh, so this can this is mostly sharing uh, your stories and sharing the story of your work. Um, you can participate through storytelling and media pitching and through social media campaigns. Uh, again, on our website, we kind of offer a number of resources for you all to do that. Um, but we know that that really looks different based on um, each uh, organization's work and community contacts. Um, so there's ways for you to obviously share the story of welcoming like in your community visually or in written form. Uh, we've seen lots of communities, uh, you know, per, like present murals, you know, as a way to kind of engage the community around Welcoming Week. Um, and then that makes really good content, you know, for a social media campaign. Uh, you can also send a pitch to your local news outlets to help cover your event, um, or you can also invite them to be part of the event in some form. Um, for instance, a panel discussion on immigration where a local reporter could be the moderator, for example. Um, we again provide a lot of social media resources, but we know with the local context that could, that could look really different, but it's a great way to engage people in your community, especially on platforms that they're very familiar with, um, and uh, particularly with younger people, because we all know younger people are more active on social media. Um, and uh, we try to also engage or, or encourage people to center the stories and messaging around the core talking points that we offer in the toolkit, but again, we also know that local community context can be very different. So just yeah, bringing those to life uh, through kind of a, a story form and sharing it out in some form, either through the media or social media or just on your own platforms. Um, kind of a third opportunity is uh, to partner. Um, so this is kind of a little bit more limited to organizations that operate on a national or international level, uh, particularly if you have your own network of constituents. Um, we invite you to become an official partner of Welcoming Week. Um, I guess, truthfully, there are a lot of the activations and activities for partners of Welcoming Week uh, don't, don't vary too much from what you know individual organizations can do to participate in Welcoming Week. Um, they just kind of get recognized a little bit differently um, on the campaign side. Uh, so again, this could, but so all the activations are very similar in terms of like you be able to issue a welcoming proclamation or a statement or sharing a piece of content around welcoming work um, or again hosting a welcoming week yourselves. Uh, and lastly, I'm just going to mention um, that you also can be a fiscal sponsor of Welcoming Week uh, if we have any organizations or funders or you know, companies like on the line. Um, we do have a sponsorship guide uh, that will be on the website soon, but this is another way for uh, companies and organizations to get involved uh, in Welcoming Week on a different and more visible uh, level. Uh, next slide. So I kind of wanted to mention uh, and talk about the daily themes. Um, so some of you who have been uh, participating in Welcoming Me for the past uh, few years uh, may be familiar with an overarching theme or a theme uh, that we've had, uh, like where we belong was last year's theme and the year before that was Belonging Begins With Us. Um, and so this year, uh, actually, we decided that we wouldn't have an overarching theme, but that we would have daily themes. Um, and this is sort of Welcoming America's sort of strategic angle in trying to um, uh, lean into our uh, welcoming standards that we have in the US um, and to have like those for different framework areas uh, inform uh, Welcoming Week. That said, uh, we certainly don't, uh, we don't uh, try to uh, force this upon anybody. Themes are here. Again, everything actually that we kind of present when it comes to Welcoming Week communications is very much like a guide, a reference, um, a resource, but certainly not like a, any, none of, nothing is obligatory by any means. Like we're not going to hunt you down or at you on social media. Like if you don't talk about education on the September 12th, like for example, um, but we just encourage it because I think it helps when we are um, as many of us that can be kind of aligned around similar messaging around these uh, around themes. Um, it can um, help kind of make the message like even clearer to to everywhere like around the world and kind of looking in from the outside about what welcoming week is all about. Um, and so through these themes, we kind of encourage you to center your messaging and themes around them. Um, and uh, but we also highly encourage locality to kind of tailor their Welcoming Week activities appropriate uh, to uh, their local context. Um, I also just want to make a note here that if you are joining us from another country, we do recommend you also reach out to our Welcoming International Alliance partners and access those toolkits, which are a bit more tailored to um, the country's context. And um, we can also include that in the, in the links uh, after uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, next slide. So here I just kind of wanted to present some examples of how we've seen the daily themes be activated, because uh, we also did incorporate these in last year's uh, campaign as well. Um, and so 
for example, the International Institute of New England, uh, which is a, one of our nonprofit members, you know, they um, use the, the daily theme of the economic development to kind of highlight a local uh, Afghan restaurant in their community. Um, World Education Services, which was a uh, partner uh, of Welcoming Week last year, um, they kind of shared more about their existing work um, and how that helps support the equitable access framework of the Welcoming Standard. Um, and lastly, the, the city of Atlanta, a local government member of Welcoming America, um, held a citizenship ceremony on Citizenship Day, which is another daily theme of ours. So um, kind of these can be sort of ways to inform how you could lean into them. But again, by no means is anyone required or you know, obliged to to do that. Okay, so uh, with that, oh, sorry, I'm going to pass it over to uh, my colleague, uh, Sophia. Thanks, Lola. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to be doing a bit of a deep dive into our website and toolkit that we have available for you all. Um, so our website can be found at welcomingweek.org, and this is actually the first year that we have a designated website for Welcoming Week, so we're super excited about that. Um, I do want to call attention to the translation feature. So on the right-hand side of your screen, um, whether you're on a computer or a um, mobile phone, you can find the translation feature on the right-hand side of your screen. And so um, the website is available in one of five languages, so English, Spanish, German, Italian, and French. So you're able to access everything that is included on the site in any of those languages. Um, I do want to call attention to uh, the newsletter sign up. So if you aren't already signed up for our newsletters, um, we highly encourage you to do that. We'll be sending regular reminders about different tools, resources, and information to help you um, put on a successful Welcoming Week event. So that can be found on the website. Um, and again, just encourage everyone to sign up. Next slide, please. Okay, so the toolkit has a designated um, page on the website and it can be segmented into basically three pieces. So our communications tools, our logos and visual assets, as well as our event planning guide. So within the communications tools piece, um, we have some core talking points that have been written out and you can edit these for um, a context that makes sense for your organization your community or your event. Um, but in case you needed a starting point, those are available to you, as well as a suggested communications timeline. So our timeline starts one month prior to your event all the way until after you host your event. Um, of course, you don't have to follow it as it's written out. You can definitely tweak it um, in a way that makes sense for you. And then next is social media tips. Um, we encourage you, oh, same slide. Yep, we encourage you to use the hashtag Welcoming Week 2023. Um, this gives us a chance to view everyone's content online, see what everyone is doing. Um, so yeah, please use that hashtag. And then of course, you're always welcome to tag us in any of your social media content as well. So we can be found at Welcoming USA on Twitter and Instagram, and then Welcoming America on Facebook. And then it's also a great way for other um, other organizations who are hosting events or um, activated around Welcoming Week to also see what you're doing too. And then the last thing that's included in the communications tools is a sample press release template. Again, you can um, alter this in a way that makes sense for you, um, but we just wanted a good starting point for everyone to have um, to start off with. So the next piece is our logos and visual assets. Um, the Welcoming Week logo is available in those five languages that I mentioned earlier. So English, French, German, Italian, and Spanish. Please feel free to use these logos on any of your um, visual communications. Just be sure to um, read the brand guidelines before using the logos. So that way we're all consistently um, making use of those. And then the I'm a welcomer signs are also in this piece of the toolkit. Um, they are available in more than just the five languages that I've mentioned. So there's a folder with those signs. And then if you want to add anything of your own to those signs, or if 
there isn't a language that you need in that folder, then um, we have an editable Canva template for you to use. So be sure to check that out if you need that. And then lastly, under logos and visual assets, we have social media templates that are segmented out into um, each of the five languages. So within those designs, we have uh, designs that correlate with the daily themes. So um, those are all available in all languages for different platforms, um, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And then the last piece is the event planning guide. Um, we have sort of an outline on how to plan your event from the ideation phase all the way to implementation. And then of course, how to continue staying engaged after your event too. So be sure to check that out. Um, and then if you're looking for more inspiration or more ideas for your events, we also have some examples listed out. Um, some of those include nonprofits, local governments, international examples. So we have that list available for you. And lastly, there is a sample proclamation or resolution that you can download and um, you can have it proclaimed in your local community that it's welcoming week um, during September 8th through 17th. So next slide, please. So um, with the toolkit or the website, if you have any questions or concerns or comments, um, please feel free to reach out to communications. So you can email communications at welcomingamerica.org. Um, and we try to be as responsive as possible. So please feel free to reach out. Next slide, please. Um, the last piece that I'm going to cover is the events map. So this will be um, a singular page on our website. And basically what it is, is a visualize, visualization of welcoming week and all of the events taking place throughout the world. Um, so there's a map feature up top um, and then to the right, on the right hand side of the screen, you can submit your event. So once you click on that button, you'll be prompted to a form and we'll ask for your event name, um, the host organization, how many participants you expect to attend and um, the location and time and other re relevant information. And once you submit that, it will populate onto the event listing just below the map. Um, if you have visited our website so far, I will say that uh, this map is not on there. Our, our website won't fully launch until June 30th, so just a few more days until some of these features will all be um, available on our website. And then if you would like to um, upload multiple events at once, we will have a guide or instructions on how to do that, but basically what that process looks like looks like is um, you'll download an Excel sheet, fill out the sheet with your events information, and then you'll email it to the communications email address. And that is all that I have. So we can go to the next slide and I'll pass it off to Lola. Thanks so much, Sophia. Um, and a quick note on uh, the uh, on the map is that if you sign up for our email newsletter, um, you can get notifications once those features are all available. Um, I also wanted to just have a quick reminder um, for folks, if you have any questions, just to put them into the uh, Q&A function and we'll get to those uh, at the end. Um, so with that, we're going to move into some of our uh, guest speakers um, who's going to share some of their uh, local examples about how Welcoming Week gets activated. Um, and first up is uh, Celeste Copy from West Central Initiative Foundation, um, with along with um, Siham Amadi from uh, North Dakota State University. Hello, everyone. My name is Celeste. I'm a Rural Initiative Strategist at West Central Initiative. Um, we are a community foundation and regional development organization based in Fergus Falls, Minnesota, and we serve the mostly rural nine counties of our region, which includes 82 cities. Um, so when it comes to welcoming week, we act like a regional um, in a regional way, like the rest of our work. So we're not actually a host. Um, we provide technical and um, financial assistance to local hosts on the ground. Um, and as I get through it, so we 
Um, next slide, please. Perfect. Um, so last year was our first year with our sponsorship format where we have a short brief application um, from local hosts from our cities and they contact us, we review applications um, and then we sponsor up to $500 per event. Um, and this is a sponsorship versus a grant approach. Um, we are a foundation, so it's no um, we're no stranger to granting, but we're trying to reach out to any businesses or organizations that may not be 501c3 to be included in the Welcoming Week um, experience. Um, so last year we had a lot of great hosts put on foods or put on events, mostly related to food, because it's a cliche, but it's true. Food brings people together. So we saw ice cream, potlucks, um, community dinners. Um, and throughout the process of welcoming week, again, so we are sponsors, um, and then we really fill in however we're needed that local hosts may need help with. Um, so last year we created flyers, helped create flyers, helped to get the word out through social media and amplify the work of these hosts throughout the region. Um, and we even do things like last minute fill in as volunteers. So I sold tickets at one event last year when others got sick. Um, this year, we're really excited. We have um, 30 potential local hosts and a lot of, again, food-centered events. Um, we do have a range of kind of levels of seriousness, if we can say that. So we do have like Immigration 101 sessions. Um, so our partner there would be Immigrant Law Center of Minnesota. Representatives do presentations in our community um, just to do some myth busting and just educate um, our area, because our area in, you know, this northern part of Minnesota is quickly diversifying. Um, and so we really focus on immigrant and refugee inclusion. And then on the flip side, there are just really great celebrations as well, performances, discussions, um, artwork involved. Um, and so with that, I'm going to turn it over to one of our community partners um, that is involved in some local hosting. So see him, I'll hand things over to you. Thank you so much, Celeste. Um, um, so I actually live in Moorhead, Minnesota, which is neighboring North Dakota, but we're our kind of own unique place. Um, and I am the chair of the Human Rights Commission in Moorhead and through several events, that's how Celeste and I met. And I um, really started to see all the benefits of the uh, West Central initiatives and the sponsorships. So, Last year was kind of Moorhead's first, um, not first welcome, like as a citywide, let's say inclusivity. I know on other nonprofits would do um, events for welcoming week, like potlucks or picnics. But last year I was fortunate to um, go to a picnic in a listening session for welcoming week that was held in September, um, which, uh, was hosted by Inclusive Moorhead, um, which is another organization that um, the city's uh, working on and including all kinds of nonprofits, city leaders, um, and partnerships with different organizations to make the city more inclusive and welcoming. As Celeste mentioned, this area is diversifying quickly and actually um, me, from my background, I immigrated here, so um, the, the the people, the majority Scandinavian background, we were one of the first, like, um, diverse, I suppose, different individuals people would mean, so that's how this region really was exposed to different parts of the world, was through the newcomers that were coming, including um, my family and and there was different waves so this area has a history of um, strong immigration and migration that's and it's rapidly increasing as we see secondary immigration and migration from the us and outside so it's a unique area um and we were fortunate to get uh, inclusive moorhead was fortunate to get support from the west central initiative foundation to host this event and here are some pictures from it there were also performances um, some of them were said not to record or take pictures so we respected that um, but we have a very unique um population of people here i mean 
And um, we all seem to kind of congregate together and support each other. Unfortunately, the history has been not a lot of participation and engagement from um, immigrants and refugees, asylum seekers within the actual city and different city events. So we're trying to flip that on its head. Um, and we can go to the next slide, please. Um, where I already described since the 1970s, um, diversity is introduced through immigration and refugees um, and also migrant workers actually um, out this way north, but growing up, especially in the school systems, that's kind of where I gravitated towards were those folks, right? Anyone, um, it was kind of hard to fit in with everybody else that had similar experiences in sports and going to their lake houses and going skiing. Well, when you're a newcomer um, to an area, you're just trying to get the basics. So kind of all banded together um, and all the newcomers and try to navigate our new communities. Um, so as a part of that, this year, um, the Human Rights Commission and Moorhead, as well as Inclusive Moorhead, with the support of West Central Initiative, um, is bringing all of that together and hopefully in integrating Welcoming Week with Greater Moorhead Days. So a way to make, to bring awareness to our entire city and in our entire community to say, hey, there's a welcome we, we'd let, you know, this is um, a way to highlight our different communities and really engage. Because our the city of Moorhead is really looking for engagement from all its citizens. And this is a way where we can um, bring in everyone to something that's already established and highlight it. So really integrate and incorporate National Law Community Week with greater Moorhead um, days and um, especially the parade because it's well attended, it'll bring exposure. Um, it will uh, bridge kind of those um, cultures and connections between leaders, businesses, um, educational institutions, and really highlight the huge um, diversity and the number of resources we do have in our area, whether it's nonprofits, businesses, or just people wanting to help. Um, so that, and then what, so again, not having a silo. So really my mind went to how can we incorporate and bring more awareness um, instead of being on the outskirts of town and being marginalized, how can we really um, highlight um, our great community and Greater Moorhead Days, we already have something in motion for it. Um, the other reason I was inspired to really um, incorporate people in the parade organizations and parades um, was last year I did run for council in Moorhead and um, I invited the people I knew from my community to be participants in the parade rather than just to watch it. And everyone was so excited that they got to participate and usually doesn't happen. They're on the sidelines, they watch all these great floats, but it never occurred to them that yes, you can also participate. So that's one of the reasons. Um, I thought it would be, and we, uh, you know, we collectively thought it would be a great idea. And then afterwards to really discuss how we can be a walk, more welcoming community and bring awareness is to hold a social. So that way we're building repertoire between everyone that attends and um, we'll have a very good group there from all around Moorhead, rather than having a siloed event where the same people attend um, for the same reasons. This way we're doing outreach to our greater community. So that is the plan for this year. And hopefully, as I say, the Human Rights Commission will make a motion to make Moorhead a certified welcoming uh, city. Um, However, that has been met with some resistance, but it's all about making partnerships, right? Reaching out and talking through it and saying the reason behind it, we already have great diversity. We have immigrate, immigrants that have been here for 30 years that really haven't been integrated and engaged. How can we fix that to address economic uh, concerns, to address um, 
and public safety concerns to overall make it a great city and not be overshadowed by Fargo all the time, which happens because it's Fargo Moorhead. So um, that's kind of where we're headed. I'm really excited. We have a lot of energy, a lot of great partners like West Central Initiative. And yeah, well, well I'm excited to get things going for this year. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you both. Uh, that was really great to hear. And we look forward to seeing more about your events uh, this welcoming week. So next, I want to introduce uh, Jovi Abelianosa uh, for the Ethnic Development Advisor for Hamilton City Council in New Zealand. Jovi, take it away. Thank you, Lola. You said my name perfectly. <laughs> then you go. So kia ora, kumusta, everyone from Hamilton, New Zealand. Um, we're actually a new welcoming city. Uh, we only joined, um, next slide please. We only joined uh, in 2021. Um, so welcoming communities in New Zealand is part of, is an initiative the, of the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment. And under that sits immigration, New Zealand. We became one of 13 uh, welcoming communities, uh, but I'd like to highlight that we were able to partner with, we call them Tangata Fenua or the local sub-tribe. Uh, officially, they're called Te Hawa Te Fenua or Kirikiri Roa. And I've been in the role for nine years and I haven't had as much engagement with our uh, local um, Tangata Fenua. So on April, 2022, they signed a commitment to support or to partner with our welcoming communities program. And on that day too, we launched our welcoming communities plan. And one of the initiatives there was actually celebrating welcoming um, week. Next slide. So I'll go through, uh, I suppose we were because of the great connections already, it wasn't as difficult, although it was first year there were challenges, but we managed to partner with about 10, 10 or 12 organizations and deliver um, activities across the week. So that was um, our last year's celebration. So we had this booklet and I'm going to show you kind of the report for that week. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry, as you can see in the first slide, we New Zealand adapted its own uh, marketing uh, collateral. And so that was the tile that we used. Yeah, next slide. So we started on a Friday and one of the schools offered to do a barbecue and music at their college. So those are the photos there. Those are their ESOL students. They brought their families, they shared a meal. Uh, one of the ladies also showcased the products from Africa. Um, and officially in the afternoon of Friday, so that was the lunch afternoon of Friday evening, uh, we did a council welcoming week launch. So with the mayor and councillors and some community representatives. Next slide, please. So that's a photo of... Uh, what took place, we had a performing group uh, of uh, boys high students who danced a Pacific dance, but also invited the audience to come and dance with them. Next slide, please. So uh, Saturday, uh, because of that partnership, uh, and I thought that was really an important, in fact, I would say that was the highlight of the week, uh, we were able to partner with um, our local Tangata Fenua to um, host what we call the Pofiri Wananga and Kai. So Pofiri is uh, an official welcome from that tribe. So there's a particular process that they do after the, and this happens in a place called the Marai, which is again, a Maori, a Maori place where they welcome uh, newcomers or new people to their space. Um, and then followed by a wananga. So a wananga was an opportunity for the kaumatua or the elders of that group to talk to those who participated in the pofiri because people hear about a pofiri, they 
attend the pufferi, but there's no opportunity for them to understand what's happening because usually it's done all in Tereo or in the Maori language. So this was an opportunity for them to ask questions and understand more about the, the culture. And of course, uh, you can't have a pufferi without kai, which is food. And in that particular event, the food was catered by our Waikato Arab Social um, Club. There was also an event on that same day, uh, which was uh, Go Eco, an environment center. They hosted a few events, uh, uh, fixing bikes, um, food swap, and, and all that. Next slide. Uh, this is just a photo of the Pufferi. So when we are welcome to the Marai, the women stand first, they're welcome first, the men at the back. But once you get into the Marai, so on the right side of this upper right photo, you have the, the Maori, the local indigenous people, and the left side are all the visitors. And as you can see in the sitting arrangement, men sit in front and women sit uh, at the back. Next slide. Um, other activities on the Monday, oh, there's a Hamilton history tour. Uh, that's thanks to the Waikato Museum. It was by registration, and once they hit 10, then they were able to push that ahead. On Monday, uh, through another organization, which is also a settlement organization, um, they hosted, or we hosted, Keeping Communities Safe. So the police, St. John's, the fire and emergency, and all other safety-related organizations were there. It also became an opportunity to orient new refugee families to um, uh, all the safety information that they needed. Next slide. Uh, one of the community centers um, was able to, and we supported them with a bit of funding, was able to host a, um, a potluck. So the photo there is from uh, a a uh, potluck. And uh, there was also a Waikato Museum tour uh, scheduled. Again, that's by registration. Next one. Um, one organization which is called Inclusive Aotearoa Collective Tahono, they were actually established after the Christchurch um, incident a few years ago, making sure that uh, they were, or through their efforts, building bridges across communities, uh, creating understanding and belonging. And they hosted a session on conversations about uh, belonging. And they continue to do that as an organization. Um, on Wednesday, another organization, uh, Earth Diverse, they are called, they hosted an open day because they're a newish organization and they had a new location. So it was an excellent opportunity to share what they were doing. Uh, they have language lessons, but they all um, deliver a lot of um, online and face-to-face -face classes on environmental, cultural, and that kind of uh, sessions. Yeah, next slide. Uh, at Earth Diverse, there was also an invitation to talk about uh, a possible initiative called Cultural Ambassadors. So there were a few people there who thought it would be a good idea. So that conversation needs to be continued. Next slide. Um, another organization, Refugee as Survivors, so hosted... Um, a session called Welcoming Refugees in School. So there's a cohort of ESOL teachers in across the schools and uh, they approached me to see how they were able to deliver, how they could deliver the, the session Welcoming Refugees in Schools. And I thought just the title itself, Welcoming, fit perfectly with what we are trying to do as a city. And especially with the teachers who encounter many migrant and refugee students. In your head, you might go, oh, they should know how to work with 
uh, this diverse students, but I was actually surprised. Um, I dropped in for a bit and one of the things, one of the teachers said, we actually don't know what we don't know. There was so much more that uh, they were able to um, learn from that session. And in fact, after that, they were able to run another session that's funded by a, what we call a welcoming communities fund and is scheduled to do a third one also with uh, teachers. Another community center also hosted a uh, welcome to Waimari um, event at their community uh, center. And we also supported that with a little bit of fun. Next slide. Uh, so those are just photos of the Hamilton History Tour and the um, Waimari event. On a Friday, it was a chance for the young people to this event. It was young people led. They came together, organized what they wanted to do with funding support from uh, council or the Welcoming Communities Fund. They called it Being, Becoming, and Belonging. They had, I think, three speakers who talked about their journey. One particular Maori girl talked about her spiritual or faith journey uh, where she's Maori, Christian, but then she converted into uh, being a Muslim. And then they just had uh, fun activities after and always there's food. Uh, next slide. Uh, more photos from the youth event. Um, another event that took place was the Titiriti in your language launch. So if you don't know, New Zealand doesn't have a constitution like many countries. Uh, uh, New Zealand has a Treaty of Waitangi, which is the main basis of how we do things. But um, this particular session was an opportunity for this organization, Tangata Tiriti, so what they do is they promote treaty education for people to understand the history of New Zealand better. But on this particular day, they launch the translations of the treaty in, uh, I forgot how many, 14 languages. Yes, next slide. Uh, and on the last day, actually a few months before welcoming week, I met with the community leaders for um, welcoming Communities Forum, and one of the things they talked about or promoting Welcoming Week, they said, we need to have a common event, uh, a cultural event. So the, the, the last day became like a cultural gathering. So there were performances from different community groups. There was food served. We also had uh, three speakers. So we had a local Maori speaker. Um, we have a speaker from Nepal, a migrant, and we had a former refugee speaking at that uh, event. So, yeah, so those were the activities that we had for welcoming week last year. Next slide. So these are just some of the feedback uh, that we got from the community and the participants. Next slide. So this... I thought would have been the outcomes from that event. Uh, for me, working in the role and not having that strong relationship with our local um, uh, indigenous people, I uh, felt that we were able to develop or strengthen that relationship with them, partnering with them to offer that uh, pottery and cultural session. Uh, we supported about 12 organizations to deliver those events and um, we gathered relevant feedback. And in fact, we have already established what I call a welcoming communities planning group to plan for this year. Oh, we've started planning, but yeah, to, to, um, to plan for the 2023 celebration. Next slide. Yeah, uh, from that first, so that was our first uh, welcoming week um, experience, but these are some things that I could suggest. Uh, remind people we are doing it again 2023, plan in advance, definitely have all those collateral. So all those that were presented earlier, those are very important. I would say though that for New Zealand, we've developed our own collateral and it was just released a few days ago. So that would be very useful. 
talk to potential partner or supporting organizations, apply for or confirm funding because obviously you need to run events. If there are sponsorships, even better. Organize a planning team, which I did this year. If you can offer a variety of activities or events for school children in particular, youth and others. For school children, I attended a meeting with uh, ESOL teachers cluster yesterday and I encouraged them to organize an activity for the kids for welcoming week. Last slide, I think. Ah, oh, that's me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Jovi. We really appreciate it. Um, Salas as well and Siham, thank you so much for your presentations. I think that um, between uh, what we heard from the different groups today, you all can get a sense of the kinds of activities and events that you all can host during Welcoming Week. And I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing what folks are going to be doing this year. I'm going to be moderating a Q&A. So if you haven't already, please feel free to use a Q&A uh, portion uh, or uh, function or on the chat to send your your uh, your questions to us. There was one question while while folks uh, put in their questions. Uh, there was one uh, question around um, any ideas on how to take advantage of Little Lamal project during Welcoming Week. So this is a question uh, for folks here in the United States. Uh, so there's a, a a a program or a campaign called Little Lamal. And Little Lamal, it will be doing a tour of the United States. And at the bottom of the Welcoming Week page, there is um, some information about Little Lamal and uh, also how you can um, get connected. So there's a, a list of resources specifically. Like I said, this is uh, specifically for US members and for folks in the United States who are looking to work with um, Little Lamal. So there is um, a partner intake survey there, um, the website, there's a marketing toolkit. So there are different ways that you can get involved and, um, and you can connect with them directly through um, the contact email that is there. So if Little Lamal is coming to one of your cities or going to 30, I think 35 cities across the US, um, please um, um, look at that. Um, the main webpage, welcomingweek.org at the very bottom, you will see um, uh, resources around that as well. So thank you. Um, any um, other questions that people have in the next few minutes that we, we uh, can answer for any of our panelists here uh, or any of our staff here at, um, at uh, Welcoming America? Um, had a question about um, the communications um, uh, assets and things like that, um, just to maybe uh, re, uh, reintroduce for folks or, or highlight um, where they can find all of this and um, and what else um, they can um, they can expect. So I don't know, Lola, if you wanna, um, again, just remind folks where uh, toolkits are and how they can make sure that they're getting all of the resources and information moving forward. Yeah, happy to. Um, so uh, we have uh, the toolkits. Um, in previous years, uh, you may be familiar that it was um, all placed into a Google Doc um, and all, as well as in different languages in Google Doc form. Uh, this year, we did launch a standalone website for Welcoming Week, uh, welcomingweek.org. Um, and um, on the top navigation menu, you should see a tab called Toolkit. And then that's where you basically will find all of the resources that you've uh, used in the past um, around like uh, messaging points, event planning guides, uh, social media uh, templates. Um, and my colleague Sophia actually created some Canva templates. So these are very customizable. If you have a Canva account, you can set one up for free and kind of leverage like all the resources there and kind of add the different languages uh, to. And the toolkit will be available in, in different languages. Uh, as well. Thanks. Um, Celeste, I had a question for you about um, for folks who are looking to get some funding or some some uh, sponsorships for their events, um, what do you what recommend what tools or or tips do you recommend for them to, to be thinking about uh, in order to, to do some fundraising for their events? Absolutely. Well, if you're in the nine counties, talk to us, but I realize that not a lot of you all are. So um, when I would say look for funders who align with the values of Welcoming America. Um, so I think we can find some in every state or part of the country. 
um, and reach out to them. So it's like, as a funder, we love talking to nonprofits or community groups on the ground looking to do things. And even if we don't have a funding opportunity available, we go out and advocate for others and look to other community partners. So if you are out there looking for funders, um, don't wait to see an opportunity posted, knock on doors, make some calls, send a polite email and see what happens. Yeah. So great. Thank you for that. Um, I'll, we have just a few more minutes, so we're just going to close it out real quickly, but uh, maybe we could uh, ask uh, each of our folks here to just give us uh, a quick um, quick thing that they're excited for uh, for this year's welcoming week. What are y'all looking forward to? Um, and we can start maybe with Jovi. What are, what are you looking forward to for this year? Just the opportunity to work with more organizations, seeing that we've done it last year um, and doing it better. So, Celeste? Um, I'm just really excited because Welcoming Week is one of my favorite parts of the year. And it's really everyone comes out of the woodwork and so much relationships are built during that week that are followed up on the other 11 months of the year, right? So that's that's what I'm looking forward to. Great. And uh, Siham? I'm really excited to do more hands-on um, events and to really just bring Welcoming Week into our city because our city is lo is looking for engagement and it's just the perfect opportunity to engage all our wonderful organizations um and our city leaders as well as you know all our neighborhoods so it's just really exciting to really put these ideas out there and get them going and get other people on board with it awesome thank you so much um, we uh, want to close out by uh, thanking um, all of our speakers um, and uh, Megan and Anthony for really helping organize all of this, uh, Lola and Sophia for all your work around the toolkit. I want to remind folks, um, if, you, um, uh, if you have other folks that you think would be interested in, in learning more about Welcoming Week, you will be able to share this recording out, but there's an opportunity um, uh, next week for folks to connect. So I'm putting in there the registration link for next week's webinar. We will be uh, doing this uh, multilingual. Um, so th uh, there will be, um, for folks who are uh, interested in this, we'll be providing uh, simultaneous interpretation in English, French, German, Italian and Spanish. So please share this link out with your networks and organizations um, here in the United States and all over the world, particularly in places that, um, that, that would be interested in hearing this information uh, in those languages. Um, with that, um, I think we'll go ahead and close unless anyone else has anything to, to add. All right, great. Well, thank you again, everyone, for, for joining us. Uh, we're looking forward to staying connected and to seeing all of the amazing events uh, that you'll be hosting during Welcoming Week. Have a great, uh, great rest of your day or evening, depending on where you're calling from. I'm looking forward uh, to connecting soon. Thank you.